In terms of props and things, um, you know, some of the costumes, but we're looking after those. Sylvia, the producer of the film, is very involved with the costume in the film, so she's looking after those. Um, in terms of documents, I can't think of anything else. You know, maybe the script. <laughs> I would say it would be the character Tytox, and she's the grandma, played by a woman called Bunsri Indi, and she has this headdress full of silver and that silver inside the Akka people and she's a part of this uh, minority group um, that really is their wealth and part of the story of, of, of the rocket is there's this actual narrative where as the family get displaced by industry and they lose more and more in their lives you see bits of this silver disappear from her headdress so it's kind of got its own narrative to it so I'd say that's my favourite costume because it's sort of symbolic and has its own narrative. Yeah, I've kept most of the drafts of the script. So, you know, we've, um, I've got early drafts and then the shooting draft and then I've got my uh, storyboards and shot lists and, uh, and then moments where I've rewritten the script. And yeah, so I've kept quite a lot of it, which is... You know, it is interesting to see how something develops and reshapes and often then goes back closer to an earlier draft, which is what we found you know, with the rocket. When I was in the edit room, I started looking at some of my earlier drafts, which were a little bit leaner, less explanation. You know, when you get close to shooting, everyone wants to put their input in, <laughs> literally everyone, and you can end up with a script that gets, you know, it's just too much in there. So when you get back to the cutting room, um, it's funny enough, I was actually looking at earlier drafts. I almost can't even begin to write until I've read a lot of history. And so documentation on people's lives, on environments, on places, uh, is absolutely essential. You know, I, I really do believe that really good stories, really good personal stories, have this whole context behind them. And that context is only there if it's been recorded on some level. So yeah, very important that it's recorded. I guess the hardest thing is that there's, it's still a, a communist country, and so there is a certain amount of censorship there. And it's not antagonistic, but there is censorship there. Uh, so that's probably the hardest thing, is that you know when you're making a film in a place where you know, the government doesn't want too much conflict, they don't want anything too political, and it's not, as I said, it's not antagonistic, it's just the way, it's, it's almost like a rating, uh, and then you're trying to tell a film that has, you know, it's quietly very political and has a lot of conflict in it, uh, that was the hardest part, we actually had to shoot part of the film out of Laos for those reasons, uh, but you know, the Lao people and the Lao government were very helpful to us while we were there. Um, so, you know, some of the other challenges, I guess, are that you're in remote areas and, you know, you're lugging gear through remote areas, trying not to film in places where there's bombs. It's the most bombed country on the planet per capita. So, which is also why we had to shoot some of it over the border when we were in jungles. We didn't want to have kids in a jungle in Laos where there could be bombs. So we went to safe places to do that over the border. Um, so, you know, there were quite a lot of challenges, but um, on the whole, Lao people are just um, very generous, helpful people. So, um, even with those challenges of filmmaking, it was uh, it really, it was great. You have got some filmmakers in Lao, and, um, but the bottom line is there's no funded industry. There was absolutely no money given from government to the film industry. So if you want to make a, a funded film, and if you want to really make a, a film which has some sort of political message, you kind of have to source outside of Laos. Um, but having said that, we had quite a few Lao young filmmakers on our shoot who became assistants um, in the cutting room and on the shoot and we really tried hard to involve the Lao community as much as we could in making of the film. Um, but um, very much 
you know, the reason we made this film was that we'd already made a documentary, Bomb Harvest, in Laos, and the Lao community really liked that film, and they said, come on, make another film. But next time round, does it have to be an Anglo protagonist? Why can't it be a Lao protagonist in Lao? <laughs> and so that was very much the driving force of, of doing this, because it was not easy, you know, in a way, why would you choose to make something in a foreign language with no stars uh, shot completely out of Australia? It was a very difficult thing to do, but that was kind of where we were at uh, in our relationship with the Lao community. They said, come on, make another film, but make it closer to our voice. We are a first world country. We have so much here. You know, we forget it, but we are so lucky here. We have so many resources, government backing in so many areas. And I do think, you know, a country like Laos, where there is no funded industry, uh, um, very poor, but holds beautiful, meaningful stories, stories that are meaningful to us in Australia. Of course, we should support them and help bring those stories out. Um, and we'd want them to do the same for us if we were in that situation. Um, it's, and, and the other thing is, I mean, it's very easy to think, well, there are no Anglo-Australian stars in this film, but the bottom line is, is that it, it, it is very much an Australian story because Australia has a lot of industry in Laos uh, and we make a lot of money from Laos. Um, and it's big industry, it's hydro, it's gold, it's copper. Uh, so if we're making all this money from this country, and we're doing that throughout all of Asia, India, China, Thailand, everywhere in Asia, we're pulling in, using other people's resources, using cheap labour. Uh, that is a part of our story. Just because it isn't shot here it doesn't mean it's got nothing to do with us. We live in this first world wealth because of what we're sourcing offshore. So, you know, I, I think... Um, um, making those relationships with third world countries and making, it, making them meaningful uh, is, is a good thing. It's a, it's a mature thing and it actually speaks well for us in Australia. I mean, you know, I, I think even though it was hard to get the rocket made, people in Australia now are very proud of the film uh, and hopefully it will make it a little bit easier for making these types of films. But having said that, nine out of ten films funded here probably should be shot here and source Australian actors, but there can be that other 10% of product that can be about our relationship with the planet 